What's up, everybody? It's Nick, a.k.a. Dreamer and Dreamlike of MT, bringing you a Shadow Sanguinary Normal Mode Guide today. Um, the first boss is the exact same Paramos from Sky Cruiser Hard Mode and Normal Mode, except for he has two new mechanics. Um, but it's a pretty, pretty normal boss if you've done it before. I'm going to go over all the things that are new to it and even some of the old things, so let's get right into it. As soon as you enter the fight, the boss will aggro to the first person that walked in and shoot a laser beam at them. It should always be your tank, and they should always be ready to iframe it. Uh, as you can see, he does his normal attack pattern that he did in uh, Sky Cruiser Hard Mode, where he slams things in front of him. He also shoots laser beams all throughout the fight instead of in designated uh, times. Um, it's usually the person furthest away from the boss, so your healer should always be the furthest person. Here is the new mechanic. When he glows orange like that, he's going to put dark circles over the DPS, and in hard mode, he'll put it over the healer also. Or if one of the DPS is dead, it'll go over the healer too. Um, and you just basically have to back up from him a little bit um, and just kind of line up the totems that you're going to put down. And then he'll probably do a laser right after, and whoever has aggro of the laser just stands in the way of those totems, and you just kill them. Um, his own laser kills the totems. If you don't kill the totems, they'll start doing little AoEs around them, and that can get pretty annoying. Uh, but in normal mode, it's not very punishing. You can get away with it. Um, they don't do that much damage. They definitely don't go anywhere near one-shotting you. Um, I'm still in dread on, uh, on my Reaper in this video, and I take very little damage to most things that happen in normal mode. Um, but yeah, he basically just goes through his regular cycle of pounding the ground in front of him, swiping in front of him, um, with the occasional orange glow to put totems down. Um, but as long as your DPS are coordinated enough to put them all down in the same area, so like you can see here, the priest just goes, lines them up, and kills them immediately. It's really, really easy, and the mechanic takes five whole seconds to get rid of. Um, he still does his webbing, as you see here. Um, it doesn't do that much damage. It puts a debuff on you that slows you. You can just cleanse it off. Um, but yeah, basically your healer, or if you have double healer, should just be always the furthest person away. And um, when they're out of iframes and they can't dodge anymore, then they come forward and someone someone goes out further so that they can start taking it. And uh, you make sure that if you have the secondary aggro for the laser on you, you're not freaking out and just turning the boss in circles. You're keeping it straight so everyone can DPS. Um, if you're the tank and you're not the one with laser on you, you should always be going around to the front right after the laser pops so that your DPS can, can get as much back time as possible. Um, I don't know if we actually show it in this video. Yeah, we didn't. Um, if you don't kill the totems, um, usually after like the first or second laser after the boss, he will go walk over to it and a shield phase begins. You have 10 seconds to break a shield. It doesn't have very much HP in normal mode. Uh, if you don't break it, it wipes. If you do break it, then it destroys the totem that he walked to, and you get a couple seconds of free back time, but you lost a lot of DPS having to uh, having to hit the shield instead of him. Alright, this boss is a little bit more mechanic-based. Um, he has three regular attacks, the blue light, um, his hand turning on fire and throwing it sideways, and then him handing, throwing his hand on fire and throwing it forward. Uh, they're all blockable. Um, here you see the first mechanic, blue pizza slices. Now, um, it's always going to happen like this, where there's a blue pizza slice, you go stand in it to be safe, he'll bomb everything close to him, and then he'll put another blue pizza slice, that's the safe zone, usually on the opposite end. Um, it's pretty easy to get used to after you've seen it a couple times. Uh, if you didn't see where the blue slice was, just usually follow your teammates and someone will have, someone will have the right place. Um, just always be ready that there's going to be the second close one in between. That mechanic starts at 95% and happens every 20% after that until 30%. Uh, you see that little purple orb floating around. Um, that will happen starting at 90% and it happens every 20% down. Again, um, basically you should be burning this boss so fast that there's just tons of orbs always flying around and just be mindful of them. Um, there was a mob phase too where there was archers and lancers and warriors spawned. Um, I always like to take care of the melee ones first, because they usually spawn towards the middle here, uh, the warriors and the lancers, and then 
if you have a laser beam at you, you should usually go point it at an archer and then iframe it at the last second or retribution if you're a reaper. Um, and if, if you have the laser on you, again, don't freak out and run in circles and make it hard on your teammates to know where it's going to shoot. Stand still or aim it at a mob. Um, yeah, basically, you should, you should just be burning this boss to the point where it's just doing non stop mechanics like this. Uh, you just have to keep your iframes up, be ready to get into the safe zone for everything, don't walk into the blue purple orbs. Um, he has two more attacks um, where he, it's unblockable if he kneels down and then uppercuts in front of him. Uh, that's unblockable, so your tank is going to have to iframe that. Um, he will also, like his, he'll wave his hand above his head, and his bracelet will come off and fly above his head, and he'll turn around and hit the DPS. Um, it doesn't do very much damage in normal mode. I don't know if it's going to one-shot in hard mode. And then uh, he also does a, another mechanic where he will pick his staff up and shoot lasers out of it in a circle around him. So... Basically, just, just kind of like watch what he does with his staff, and, um, and you'll get a gist of, of what attack he's going to do after you do this enough times. Um, see here at 20%, it'll just be a burn phase. You have 20 seconds to burn him down to 10%, and then the boss fight will end, and he will run away because he is going to buff himself and become the third boss for this dungeon. All right, now the third boss is going to be the hardest in this dungeon. And the one that you guys are going to spend the most time having to learn. Uh, he has a lot of attacks that aren't blockable. His regular attacks just generally in front of him are blockable. But his swipes and his smashes are not. The swipes are things that you're going to have to get used to knowing which side they're going to be on. And the slams have the same animation as a swipe. Except for instead of pausing, he says just kidding in the middle of it. And he turns around and either smashes the DPS or he smashes the tank in front of him. Both of these aren't blockable, so you need to be ready to iframe them if you see a swipe animation get cancelled and go to a smash animation. Uh, here you see he summons mobs starting at 85% and then randomly afterwards, where uh, he'll do a cage phase right after. Um, it's kind of random what, like, what motion these go in, so you have to be ready. They can do pizza slice into close or pizza slice into pizza slice, but he'll always do all five of them. And this will always be the last one. Uh, be careful that you don't iframe into the cage because there's a glitch with it where if you go too deep into the wall of the cage, it'll count you as out of bounds and kill you immediately. Um, here you see is the secondary cage animation. At 75%, he starts doing this. where uh, He'll call out that he has the blood vein power or some shit, and then he'll slam the ground twice to knock you guys back. And then he'll do cage again. So just be ready to get away from him whenever he calls out something about the blood vein. And again, these things happen in a random order. Um, they just happen to all be going in the same way, but I've seen them go drastically crazy before. So just be ready and know that they're not always going to be the same. Um, at 70% and 50%, he does the shielding phase where he'll target the tank, call him out, and um, your tank wants to run as far away as possible while your DPS slam into his back with their brooch and any skills they have like reaping. Um, if you don't burn it, he'll stab the tank and usually throw it at the healer and both of them will die and that's not a fun time. Um, here he's doing the mobs again. If you do not kill the mobs, that's fine. They'll turn into pylons that shoot um, little energy balls out. But it's definitely more important that you all are alive and get back into the cage in time more than it is important that you kill the mobs. Um, in my party, I always like calling out when it's time to get back um, so that everyone can get into it. Here you see me fuck up a uh, double circle mechanic. You want to iframe out of the first circle, and then right when the first circle's animation is done and depleted, you want to iframe the one that, get, that gets put on you and follows you. Um, here's the blood, the blood vein cage again, um, but I wasn't quick enough to dodge it. And um, basically, the cage phase is going to be what kills you the most, I think. You have to get used to it. Um, you have to be ready and use your, use your movement skills if you're out of iframes or make full use of your, excuse me, make full use of your iframes. Um, again, cage phase, 50%. Um, if, 
you're burning too quickly, you won't have reaping and broach up again for this. But if your tank is prepared and knows how to get away from the boss, it should be easy. When you get secondary circles on everyone like that, um, the timing when you iframe it is when the second pulse on the highlight is about to hit the edge, you iframe. Again, mobs, uh, kill as many as you can. Um, when you see that it's getting close to cage, come back. Tell your team, fuck the mobs, we'll kill them afterwards. Your first priority after surviving the cage should be getting those mobs out of the way so that way they don't get annoying and start killing you for no reason. Um, but yeah, basically most of most of this boss is just getting used to his swipes and not dying to cage. Um, in hard mode, he's going to be a lot less forgiving. You probably won't be able to survive most of his regular attacks or his swipes or things like that. Um, here, he'll he'll randomly target a DPS and try to stab them. In normal mode, he won't actually stab them and fling them, though. Um, but you can dodge it easy. Sometimes he'll just teleport randomly behind the DPS and destroy them um, and, and fling you guys back, but that's not... It doesn't do that much damage, to be honest, and unless you're already about to die, it won't kill you. Um, here we left a lot of mobs out, but it's okay, because we know that we can kill them afterwards, and uh, they're far enough away to where they're not going to get in the way of our cage dodging. Um, my greatest uh, tip for, for cage dodging is to always be like right next to the boss, or like within, within a good distance of the boss, and I frame backwards diagonally or forwards diagonally. Um, here you see me get killed by swipe because I wasn't looking at the boss because I was killing mobs. But I mean, that's really all that you need to pay attention to during this boss. Uh, you just have to get used to Cage and you have to get used to his swipes. Um, his slams are really forgiving in this. Again, they give you the highlights way before it happens, unlike the swipes. So uh, I hope you guys have fun. And I hope that you guys um, get your practice in for this because hard mode comes out next week. And that's going to be fucking awesome. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope that you guys learned something. Uh, I'm also going to link Yosha's guide below in the description if you want like detailed um, animation guides and uh, you want to be able to read all of this, basically. Um, they did a really, really good job on putting a written guide together, but I still felt like I wanted to put a, a video guide out for people that are the kind of people that like learning by watching and they like seeing people actually do the mechanics instead of just like individual videos of animations. So I wish you guys all good luck and I'll see you in the next guide.